I sure seem to get a lot of grief over one of the things I learned a long time ago. And it was this whole idea of reaction and action. You know, that every time that something comes along, you know, you have to immediately stop what you're doing, get on the phone, call your politician, call your local elected duty official, or whatever it may be, and get all worked up and all excited and get everybody involved and wound up and, you know, kind of frustrated and mad and take the time to stop whatever they're doing, whether it be the gospel or Bible study or church or whatever it may be. But we have to stop what we're doing. We have to get worked up and get all excited because, oh no, they passed a law that somebody interpreted it to mean something that it wasn't meant to be. And so now they're telling us that, oh no, they're making concentration camps. It's called FEMA. You know, the original story, which is really stupid, went out that they were looking for setting up in all 50 states, 50 locations for there being storage of emergency medical supplies because FEMA is Federal, Federal Emergency Medical Administration. So that was one contract. Then there came out, what happens, and just recently it became a political issue, what happens when you have an American terrorist? You know, like the one that was down in, gosh, I think he was in Somalia. Where they, no, they didn't kill him in Somalia. But anyways, he died because of a drone attack. Well, if you're a, you know, theoretical law student, you're going, American killing American? even though he's an American terrorist, doesn't he have to come back to court first? And so somebody decided, oh, you know what? In order to cover that, we need to have a law about what happens if we have homegrown terrorism. Well, we need to be able to put them somewhere because if they're a terrorist, we can't put them into prison because Frankly, we don't know what to do with it because we haven't crafted laws to cover that. So we created this little place called Guantanamo, and it was a military camp and an internment center. Now, it's interesting is that right now we have everybody terrified of these FEMA camps that are supposedly going to throw lots of people into these FEMA camps. And you know, I used to live in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Now, Klamath Falls, Oregon is real close to Tule Lake. Tule Lake is right next to the Japanese internment camp that was not for Japanese. It was for Japanese Americans. Because you see, when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, we rounded up all the Japanese we could find and shoved them into internment camps. Was it legal? No, it wasn't. We just invoked the War Powers Act and did it. And so, it was okay back then. But then later, afterwards, we apologized. Then we began to pay repatriation. We started to pay for our mistakes of what we had done by taking away the rights of individual citizens that were Americans, that were of Japanese descent, that had nothing to do with Japan. And we began to pay back those families for what they had lost because we had abused the law. So now we've got people that are terrified that are going, oh no, these FEMA camps, these FEMA camps. And because they hate the current administration, and I mean hate, not just dislike, they get all wrapped up into this fearful thing. And when the next administration comes, then you'll have the other side fearful of them using what we already did with Guantanamo. So you see, before this current fear of FEMA, we had everybody warning us, the military is confining people in prison forever with no trial. And nobody was really that upset about Guantanamo until they got elected. And then they decided to change that. And 
once they got elected, they figured out, well, we don't know what to do about this. So since they don't know what to do, they're trying to figure out what to do, and they're coming up with other alternative solutions. Because, you see, to build a federal prison costs a lot of money. So what if, in the emergency medical planning, they decided to store all these housing units for when floods come, earthquakes, and disasters? What if they decide to use those for internment sometimes for other reasons, like say, Occupy Wall Street, you know, and oh my gosh, you know, what if they're breaking the law and they decided to riot? Where do we put people that riot when the jails are full? Well, they have rights. Yeah, they have the right to be put in jail for breaking the law. But that's not what it says. I read that they were going to give supposed power to the military to do what they want. The amazing thing to me is when people take these made-up stories from these imaginary sites that want to go over the top because they're called advocacy. Advocacy means they're only going to point at one little thing and blow it out of proportion so that you will get involved to make it the most important thing in your life. That you will get wrapped up into it and that you'll have to get everybody else wrapped up into it so we can change it. Whether it's good or bad, we don't know because we're in a hurry to hurry up and do it. Because somebody's sneaking around here, you know, and then you start getting paranoid. And you know, whenever you see somebody trying to create fear, it's called fear mongering. God never brought the gospel in a state of fear. Jesus said, hey, look, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Anyone that comes up to me, I will in no wise cast out. A smoking willow or wax he did not even quench, much less did he break a bruised reed. In other words, he was so gentle that he was able to be entreated of all men. And that causes us to know that we could trust what he had to say. Now, people trusted him up to a point, because you see, they trusted him when they could see the miracles. They trusted when they could see and be fed, kind of like what's happening today. You know, people trust the government as long as they're getting fed. We can trust the government as long as we've got a full belly. But once we don't have a full belly, can't trust the government anymore. Who will you trust? Ghostbusters. We can trust in the government system as long as we say, our founding fathers were all Christians. They never did anything like that before. Really. We had a civil war. <laughs> What do you think happened after that? Carpetbaggers? So, people get this idea that they have to put their trust in some action that they do instead of putting their trust in the Lord. Now, Joshua had the same problem. Joshua had been wandering around with this ragtag, you know, millions of Jews. <laughs> Two Jews is just bad enough, but me? Oh my God. Oh boy. No wonder they wandered in the desert. God couldn't put up with them either. But Joshua finally, you know, he's going to go in the land. You know, he's going to get it. You know, and so sure enough, he goes in and God says, look, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I will take care of Jericho. Yeah. But you got to do it my way. Now, this is the impenetrable city. This has walls that are so thick that you can't get in. This has an army so vast that you can't defeat them. But I'll take care of it. Joshua says, Hey, I was with Mo up on the mountain when the people were down there partying. I was with Mo when we walked through the parting of the Red Sea. I was with Mo when, you know, we were still wandering in the wilderness and, you know, the snakes were, the scorpions were stinging everybody and they were dying. And we lifted up that pole with that snake on it, you know, and Everybody was saved. So, I'll take your word on it, God. I think, I think you know what you're doing. Because, you know, I was with Mo when you did it before, so I think you can do it again. So Joshua goes, Tell you what, generals, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to send the army. Say what? We're not going to send the soldiers in. Huh? 
we're not going to pull up our swords and shout and scream and get all wrapped up in killing. No, what we're going to do is we're going to send in the priests. Yeah, yeah, right. Sure you are. <laughs> How long will they last? No, we're going to do this. Matter of fact, we're going to we're going to do this seven days. We're going to we're going to walk down there and we're going to sing. We're going to march around. We're going to shout the Lord, praise the Lord. So we're going to on the seventh day we're going to do this and we're going to march around seven times and then we're going to give one last shout and the walls fall down. And the general said, uh uh. <laughs> Not a chance. But since Joshua was in charge, Joshua was God's man, Joshua was put in charge, they had to do what Joshua said. So when Joshua told them what the Lord said, they did it. And guess what? Wow! The walls fell down. Everything happened just like Joshua said, just like the Lord promised he would do. So, cool. We could trust in the Lord. It's not by might. Okay. It's not by power. Okay. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Okay. So then we get to AI. And before they get to AI, there's a bunch of people come running up, you know, in rags, you know, and they go, hey, you know what, man? We're so poor, and we heard that you conquered, and you're so wonderful. You know, we don't want you to, you know, to hurt us. We have this little city on the way, you know, that we don't want you to destroy, you know, because we just need your favor. So Joshua thought about it talked to his people about it, and they all said, ah, they're not worth the time of day, you know, don't worry about them. So Joshua made a treaty with them. And you know what? He didn't ask God. And if you know the Bible, you know what the rest of the story is on that one. He came back and did them. As a matter of fact, not only did that happen, down the road he finds out what the rest of the story is of how he compromised, but then he goes out in another battle and he says, Hey, you know what? We bad. We bad. We bad. We knocked that Jericho down. We bad. We bad. We tore it all the way down to the ground. You know, and we started rapping about, you know, how bad he was, you know. And sure enough, man. The dude was bad. Or God was. So the fear of him and his army was upon the land. And so then they go and they say, hey, look, there's this little city, you know, we can go and take it. Well, Joshua kind of goes, ding, ding. Maybe I should ask the Lord. And the generals go, nah, don't bother him. We can go get it. So he says, okay, let's go. So, oh, Josh. Gosh, Josh, what are you doing? Well, you know, I'll get back with you in a minute, God. I got something to do first. So he runs down and takes his army with him, you know, and the generals, and they go down and they get their butts kicked. <laughs> and then little midgets came back and they just whacked us out. Literally, because they didn't inquire of the Lord, and that's what God said to him. You didn't ask me. <laughs> I didn't tell you. So now, guess what? It ain't going to work the way you think it is. It could have been easy. Now it's going to be hard. The point of Joshua's life and the reality of what he did and how he did it should be telling you and I what we are supposed to do in our life. It should be a reminder about trust and communication and seeking the Lord. Because if you don't seek the Lord, if you just think you know what you're doing and you go out on your own way without talking to him his way, well, guess what's going to happen? It ain't going to happen the way you think it is. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to turn into a disaster. And since we have the book of Joshua, we know what happened. <laughs> he got wiped out. And sure enough, you know, you'll see that the children of Israel never really conquered all the lands because they kept trying to do it their way. 
and not his way. So when you trust, you've got to learn not to react to all these things that people are doing in politics, things people are doing in city councils or any of those things. There's a certain amount of truth to voting. There's a certain amount of truth to being responsible to what you want to do. But you don't do what you haven't prayed through and asked God first to do. Because if you do it out of context, if you do it without him, you'll probably be seeing what happens, what you do when he's not involved. And you know, every time I bring that up, when I say, hey, did you, hey, did you pray about it? <laughs> oh man, I get yelled at when I tell someone, well, you know, you can tell me that we need to fear, but the Bible tells me that I can trust in the Lord with all my heart, that I should seek him, I should pray to him, and I should let him direct me with what I should do. I get yelled at for that. You know what? As a matter of fact, I get told that I am such a mean person. That I am like, I've got this anger about me. I am so doggone that. You know, it's always funny because the people that are posting these... Whoa, we got to get organized stuff. Are usually the ones that are mad. And they got this, you can hear it, the vitriol. They're telling how evil this thing is or how wrong it is and what we got to do, we got to do, we got to, got to, got to. You know, and they're, they're, they're upset. Yeah, they don't have any peace. It's obvious by their words. They're not saying, what would Jesus do? Matter of fact, you bring up the Bible and they practically chew you with it. Or try to. They don't say, well, maybe we should pray about this. They say instead, no. What are you going to do? And they give all these, these weird analogies like, oh, well, as soon as they come pounding on your door, what are you going to do then? Huh? Huh? What if the army comes knocking on your door and drags you off? And I'd say, praise the Lord. The army dragged me off. <laughs> and God knew. <laughs> Hello? If you can't trust God, to put it bluntly, you're screwed. <laughs> That's the bottom line. We're in the last days. Some things, yes, be aware of, but don't be scared of. See, being aware is one thing. But being scared or manipulated by people to do something that God hasn't told you to do, that's just like Joshua doing the wrong thing at the wrong time in the wrong place with the wrong people. But if you're doing the right thing at the right time in the right place with the right people, miracles happen. Gee, I wonder how come Elisha could lay around and not worry about what was happening to him. And he kept telling everyone, hey, I ain't worried about it. <laughs> I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. God, take care of it. And people keep trying to tell me that I'm the one that's naive. Well, okay. So, since I've been a Christian, 35 plus years, and I've seen all these things happen just like Joshua, just like Elisha, in my life, personally, with me, in me seeing, handling with my own hands, watching God operate, and being very well aware of when miracles are happening and how he's taking care of it, and I had, didn't have to do anything at all. I'm now supposed to deny what I know to be true from A, the Word of God, be the Spirit of God telling me in this situation, whatever it is, that I need to trust the Lord. And then see my own experience of how I trusted in the past and I can trust Him now. I think when Joshua was saying, hey, I was with Mo, then he was an eyewitness to what he had already experienced. And you know what? I'm going to tell you the same thing. When I tell you to trust in the Lord with all your heart, be not your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path, I'm not making up some philosophy. I'm not stating some kind of course of action that you know you can just use as a plan. I'm talking about a personal relationship where you should be doing that anyways, and it is the first response for every Christian. What is the first responder's new rule? Stop! Not rush in. You see, the new rule for first responders is to evaluate. In other words, when you see a fire, do you run to go put it out? Or do you look and see if it's a fire on top of some TNT and it's going to blow you up if you go put it out? That's called evaluate, you know? Duh! 
or if you're running into a house that's full of smoke, uh, do you stop and look and see if maybe you should put on a mask first and then go in? Evaluate. So you stop and evaluate. Whenever people are trying to hurry you into a rash decision or a rush thing to do something about, stop. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. God even says sometimes, watch and see the salvation I bring. Now, you can go out and you can call your senators, and you can call your congressmen, you can call the president, you can call this, and you can call that, and you can call me, and you can go 1-800, you know, whatever. Or you could call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. You can call upon God, and He will deliver you. You can ask, and you would receive. You can seek, and you will find. You can knock, and the door would be open. Because you know what? God said His eyes go to and fro, looking for whose heart is perfect towards Him, that He may act on their behalf. And you know what? I took that to heart to mean every little thing. And you know what? I've been confronted in violent situations. I've been in Jerusalem. Hey, I know where a bomb went off that should have blown me up. God intervened. I've been in front of guns pointed at me. I mean, you know, come on, guys. Don't try to threaten me with what supposed situations you think I haven't been in. <laughs> the Lord didn't want me dead yet. <laughs> That's for sure. And was I afraid then? Not really. You know, it's kind of hoping in a way. I know I'm a little weird, but that part of me is a little weird. I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, go ahead. Kill me. See if I care. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I'm out of here, dude. You know, and people are dumbfounded that God does intervene, as he said he would, because he promised he would. But you have to trust him. You have to ask him. You have to seek him every day and let him do it his way. Because if you're just belligerent about it, and you just run out there and say, well, I trust, and you run in front of a car, I trust that this car won't be there. Well, God didn't tell you. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not to that on your understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. You have to acknowledge that he's talking to you, and what he says he wants you to do, because if you ain't getting it from him, you're doing what you do, and that's do. -do. You get it? Sometimes people are making do-do out of what God says to do. And that is <laughs> But what I find interesting is trust also in Him. The word trust is the heart word of faith. It is the Old Testament word, the word given to the early and infant stage of faith. The word faith expresses more than an act of the will. The word belief is the act of the mind or the intellect. It is up here, not in here, and it's not spiritual. But trust is the language of the heart. The other has reference more to a truth believed in or a thing expected. Trust is the action of faith. Faith doesn't really do much. It's just there or it ain't. <laughs> you got faith? Yeah, I got faith. Okay. Prove it. Well, I trust. Oh, okay. So you trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust implies more than this. It sees and feels and leans upon a person. A great and true living heart of love. God loves you. So let us trust also in Him through all the delays, in spite of all the difficulties, in the face of all denials, Notwithstanding all the seemingly things we need to do and people screaming at us telling us we have to do something besides trust. Well, what are you going to do? Trust? No, I mean, really, what are you going to do? Trust. Well, what are you going to do? Trust. Well, what do you mean trust? Well, I'm going to trust the Lord. Well, what's that mean? It means I'm going to trust him. If he tells me to do something, I'll do it. But if he doesn't tell me to do I'm not doing nothing until he tells me to do it. The way will open. The right issue will come, the end will be peace, the cloud will be lifted, and the light of eternal noonday shall shine when we trust in the divine. In other words, trust isn't the lack of action. 
trust is the manifestation of a complete action of faith. It is knowing and applying that knowledge to who you know and what he can do because you can't do it. So, when you find yourself being ramrodded like Joshua was by people to do something, remember to go to the Lord first because you seek him first. Whenever you're being forced into or you think you can do something on your own and you want to jump out there and conquer in the name of God, remember, bluntly, if God ain't in it, he ain't in it. If he don't go with you, you don't go anyways. <laughs> kind of makes perfect sense if you know your Bible. Hello? But God gave us his Holy Spirit so we can do anything we want to. Okay. Go for it. But as for me, at my house, I think we'll serve the Lord by seeking the Lord to find out how, what, when, where, why, if, and, or what about serving him that we would do every day. Oh, well, we got those down, so that's today. Okay, got that down. Every minute of the day, every hour of the day, and in everything. What do you mean everything? Well, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. All thy ways? You mean you want to go to the bathroom? Hey, Lord, thanks for the bathroom, man. I'm not going. <laughs> yes, in all thy ways. Do you think he can't see you and he's not involved in your life personally in everything? In all thy ways? In every... Whatever hair you got left on your head? In every star in the universe that is named by him? Come on! In every atom and every fiber of your being, you don't know that he knows? That's why he's God and not a person. He's big and you need him. Yes, in all thy ways. Seek to ask Him. Seek to follow Him. Seek to know Him, and He will direct you. Because most of what you do, when you're banging your drum, clanging your gong, raising your arms, the battle cry, trying to take your sword out, you know, and go out there and start slashing and gashing, you know, you're usually making a big commotion over nothing. And God just stands back and watches and says, I'll pick them up when they fall. And some of us who have been around for a while, that's what we do too. Because you will fall. 